welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. Original air date is March 26, 1952, and the title is Jokes and Gunsmoke. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, presents Wild Bill Hickok! your hats and pass those Kellogg sugar corn pops. Cause here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the great news cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops! Today, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of jokes and gun smoke. (laughs) Say, boys and girls, if you haven't seen what your pals here, Guy Madison and Andy Devine, look like yet, listen. You'll find swell, big, actual, real-life photographs of both Guy and Andy right on the front of those big, new, yellow Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops packages now at your grocer's. So hop down and look for them soon. Now, let's listen. Their job of law enforcement took United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy Jingles into most of the little towns of the Old West. In many towns, they found danger and adventure, but it was in the little town of Black Rock that they found the unusual combination of jokes and gun smoke. Ding, busted, Bill! We come out to the desert where it's supposed to be hot and dry, and what happened? Rains for two days. When it does rain out here, it rains hard, Jingle. Now my poncho's starting to leak. I haven't been so uncomfortable since Joker threw me into that cactus bush. Well, at least I won't have to spend all night picking thorns out of you. Hey, when we get to Black Rock, I'm going to bust out and buy myself a new poncho. That's what I'm going to do. That is, if you'll lend me the money. Will you, Bill? Will you? Huh, Bill? I guess so, Jingles. We'll go shopping at Charlie Nichols' general store, huh? Yeah. Reckon he'd have a poncho. Yep, Charlie just about got everything. You don't happen to need an anvil or a gold-plated button hook, do you? Well, now, come to think of it, I've always wanted a gold-plated button hook, but I ain't buying it from Charlie Nichols. Why not? Oh, he's the old buzzard that plays practical jokes on his customers, ain't he? Yeah, that's right, but... He's not so old. He's only 83. Yeah, and he's never grown up. <laughs> I hear he set his store on fire seven times, giving exploding cigars to his customers. He does get pretty rough with his jokes. Well, if he tries any of them on me this time, he ain't going to live to be no older than 83. Now, you wouldn't hurt an old man, Jingle. No, but just let him squirt water in my eye or... Put a jack in the box in my bedroll and I'll braid his ears and his whiskers together like a little girl's pigtail. I don't like practical jokes. All right, all right. Now simmer down. Let's prod up these ponies and get in out of the rain. Ah, Jingles. Uh, I am jump for cover, Joker. Hi, Baksha. Hi. You won't hit him with a 45. Maybe not, but when I get shot at, I shoot back. Okay, partner. Let's see if we can get him before he gets to town and loses us. Go after that black horse, Buckshot. Go, Joker! You heard what Bill said. Ha, ha, ha! He went into the livery stable, Bill. We'll catch him. Come on. Bill, look out. Whoa, Buckshot, whoa. Whoa, 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 Joker. Bill, he's disappeared. The back doors are closed. He's in there somewhere. How can a horse and rider get out of sight that fast? Hey, you two. Howdy, mister. What's the idea of charging into my livery stable like a troop of cavalry? You'll spook every horse in the place. We're looking for just one horse. A big black. And a bushwhacking snake in a red shirt who's riding him. I don't know what you're talking about. 
There's been nobody in here all morning except you two come pounding in like a couple of Apache braves. Now, look, mister. We've got reasons for finding that gin on the black horse, so don't start lying to me. I don't know who you are, stranger, but this is my livery stable. Private property. And when I say I haven't seen anybody come in here but you, that's just what I mean. I'll tell you who we are. Jingles, not no. No. Well, I guess maybe you're right. Sorry we bothered you. Come on, partner. Let's get down to Charlie Nichols' store and get in all the rain. Come on, Buckshot. But Bill... Up, boy. Bill, are you crazy? That fellow was lying to us as sure as I'm a foot wide. Jingles, if he's going to that much trouble, we can be sure our friend in the red shirt is mixed up in something bigger than just bushwhacking a couple of strangers. Let's see if we can find out what it is before we start anything. <laughs> Howdy, Wranglers. Your old pal, Panhandle Jim, again. Say, uh, what are you going to do tomorrow morning come breakfast? I know what I'm going to do. Pop right up to the table and pour me out a big heaping bowl of Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Yes, sir, by Jingo. Then I'm going to add a little milk and dig into the most delicious breakfast treat I know of. And notice I don't go putting any sugar on my Kellogg's sugar corn pops. No, sir. Sugar corn pops are already sweetened for you. Tasty, popped-up hearts of corn ready for eating. Out of the bowl or out of the box, you never tasted a cereal so downright good as Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Believe me, you just try a bowl of Kellogg's sugar corn pops for breakfast tomorrow, and you'll be ready to sing this song, too. Yippee! Sugar pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. <laughs> When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles started chasing a rider who'd parted their hair with bullets, they followed him into the livery stable in the town of Black Rock, where he mysteriously disappeared. Now they've ridden to the general store owned by their old friend Charlie Nichols. Bill, we ought to be able to find that black horse and the man in the red shirt somewhere in this town. We'll be looking for him, partner. This place ain't much bigger than a couple of prairie dog holes. I also want to know how our friend in the livery stable figures in the picture. Well, 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 if it ain't Wild Bill Hickok and Jingle. Howdy, Charlie. I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> yeah, where you been, you old buzzard? Well, it, I've been right here. It's you two who's been chasing all over the West. And what's the idea of calling me an old buzzard? Oh, cause I ain't no mood for your jokes, Charlie Nichols. Uh, one little squirt in my eye or one mouse trap in your cracker barrel and I'm liable to sit on you. Yes, well, if you'd keep your fingers out of my barrel of crackers, you wouldn't get mouse trapped. Now, looky here. Now, oh, just a minute, you two. Oh. Charlie. Yeah? You know everybody in this part of the country. Well, just about. Have you seen anything of a gent wearing a red shirt and riding a big black horse? Yeah, the kind of a gent that takes pot shots at people riding down the trail. No, no, can't say I know anybody answering that description. Why, what's the matter? Somebody figured Jingles was too big a target to pass up? <laughs> this particular fellow was shooting for keeps. If the rain hadn't spoiled his aim, we might not be here. And don't say, how could he miss Jingles even in the rain? I didn't even start to say nothing. Trying to figure why anybody should be out bushwhacking on that trail. Have there been any robberies or killings around here lately, Charlie? You know, it's funny you should ask that, Bill. Why? Well, Sheriff Weaver was shot and killed last week while he was looking into some rustling over on West Mesa. You mean Dan Weaver's dead? Yeah. Oh, Bill, that's awful. It sure is, Jingles. How did it happen, Charlie? Well, I don't rightly know. Some of the folks over on the Mesa started missing some of their stock, and when... Dan rode over to investigate. He never come back. Some of the boys found him the next day. Sounds as though somebody doesn't want the law poking into his business. Well, if that's it, he's got what he wants. The sheriff was the only law we had around here. Stop looking at me that way, Bill. I know you and I are the law, too. I guess we'll be staying around here for a while, Jingles. Uh, would you, Bill? 
I'll look into this thing, Charlie, and see what I can find out. Oh, here we go again. We're just peacefully riding back home to Abilene. Don't forget the weasel that shot Dan Weaver may be the one who parted our hair with a rifle bullet a little while ago. By golly, that's right. I would like to get my hands on that buzzard in the red shirt. Well, then, bring in your things and roost here. I got a couple of extra bunks in the back of the store. Oh, that's right. Nice of you. I guess this is as good a place as any to work from. Well, yes. And I'll, I'll make a pot of coffee and fry some bacon and eggs. Uh, Jingles, uh, help yourself to some crackers out of the barrel there. Well, I am kind of empty at that. Don't mind if I do have a few crackers. <laughs> Just a little something to keep my body and soul together until you get the break. Get me off! 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 Get me that's the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. It's one of Charlie's jokes, Jingles. Oh, is that all? <laughs> it ain't funny, you old goat. Oh, it couldn't hurt you. <laughs> Just a bundle of feathers with a clock spring and a whistle in it. Bill, I ain't staying here with this old coot. It ain't safe. Yes, you are, Jingles. What? We can hide out here and find out what all the shooting's about. Oh. <laughs> I must say you make pretty good bacon and eggs, Charlie, and none of them blew up in my face. Yes, well, I don't play jokes on my regular friends, Jingles, just on the strangers that come through Black Rock. You mean Jingles is still a stranger after all the years you've known him, Charlie? Well, Jingles is different. I like spring jokes on him because he hollers so loud. <laughs> yeah, you'll be hollering if you pull any more jokes on me, you... Old rooster, you had my nerves cracking and slapping like a cow's tail in fly time. Oh, oh, sure. Well, a good laugh keeps you from getting old. Just look at me, 83, and I still like a good joke. Well, you ain't going to live much longer if you start joking with me again. <laughs> oh, oh, doggone, it sounds like I got me a customer out in the store. Now, you just sit there and finish your coffee. I'll be, I'll be right back. Well, howdy there, stranger. Uh, what can I do for you? I'll just stock a rifle part, Pop. Oh, pretty good. Sharps, Winchester, Kentucky, or Remington? Winchester. I broke the lever on it. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I got one here, Summers. Uh, let's see the gun. Here it is, and get a move on, will you? I'm in a hurry. Yeah, been firing this today, ain't you? Smells the powder pretty heavy. I didn't ask you to smell it. Well, get me the part. Bill, I wonder if that's the gent wearing a red shirt. Let's go find out, partner. Yeah, I'll let me see here. I got a box of 30 30 parts here, Summers. Uh, don't need a whale bold corset, do you? No, I don't need no corset. Uh, Who are these gents? Well, I don't reckon it's none of your business, but they're friends of mine. Wild Bill Hickok and Jingle. That's me, Jingle. Hickok. Well, uh, I've uh, heard a lot about you, Marshal. I uh, didn't know you was in these parts. Just passing through. And as long as we're all asking questions. What's your name, stranger? Well, my name's uh, Rango, cattle buyer. Looking for some beef I can drive to the railhead. Well, this is good beef country. By the way, uh, is that your horse out in front? Big Pinto? Yeah, that's mine. Hey, how you coming with my rifle, Pop? Well, I don't know whether this is the right part or not. Here, take a look. Now, let me see. Yeah, that looks like it ought to work. How much? That'll be a dollar and a half. Okay, here you are. Uh, glad to meet you, Hickok. Thanks, Ringo. Maybe I'll see you later, huh? Uh, one thing before you go, mister. Yeah? What's that? Where can I get a pretty blue shirt like that? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to send to the mail order house in Kansas City. Well, I'm in a hurry. See you gents later. Do you know that gent, Charlie? Nope. Never saw him before in my life, Bill. But I know that horse. Whose is it? Belongs to Jack Blandon down at the livery stable. Well, now, ain't that interesting? It sure is, partner. What about Blandon? He's a pretty worthless character as far as I'm concerned. Always fighting and starting arguments. Every time he comes into the store, he wants to know something about the cattle ranches around here. Oh, talk, talk, talk. Why don't we go chase somebody or arrest somebody or something? It might be a good idea to find out what they've done first. Bill, the sheriff dead, cattle are being rustled, and we've been shot at. Ain't that enough? Can you prove who did those things? Well, no, but 
Can't we do something to somebody, Bill? Can't we? Huh? We can start, partner. Come on. Look, Rango, are you sure it's Hickok? Of course I'm sure, but what's he doing here? I don't know, but that hombre's trouble. We've had a sweet little deal with you posing as a cattle buyer so you could line up stock for us to rustle. But I don't want to tangle with that star packing marshal. I shouldn't think so, especially since you gunned down the sheriff last week. You just forget about that or you'll have to wind up eating a couple of slugs yourself. All right, all right. Just this makes me jumpy to have Hickok in town and asking a lot of questions about what color horse I ride, what color shirt I wear. You were loco to take a shot at him out on the trail. I'm telling you, Blandon, he and that big deputy of his were getting too close to the canyon where, where we're holding those cattle. I thought I could scare him off. Hickok doesn't scare. Yeah, I know that, but I didn't know who it was. Well, the only thing for us to do is move those cattle out on the trail and do it right now. Saddle up. Yeah, sure. I guess you're right. I, uh, I thought we'd be safe when we got rid of that sheriff. Now we got Hickok on the trail. Oh, you jughead. Hickok hasn't caught us yet. We're moving those cattle and cashing them in at the railhead. And what if Wild Bill finds us doing it? <laughs> Just fixed your rifle, didn't you? Yeah. We've killed one lawman already. If Hickok gets in our way, we'll give him the same medicine. Well, I'll be a whistling young bronc buster, partners, if I haven't been digging into these new Kellogg sugar corn pops in the big yellow box, lickety split right along. And this is the first time I slowed down to take a good close look at them. Well, these new sweeter and crisper Kellogg sugar corn pops look just as good as they taste. Sweet, golden, nugget-like hearts of corn, all popped up bright and jolly, just glistening with a sweetening already on them. Yep, by jingo, it sure is easy to see why sugar corn pops are just plum wonderful. Out of the box like candy or out of the bowl with milk. And remember, there's a whole series of Wild Bill Hickok's famous guns on the backs of the new yellow boxes of Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. So look for them down at the store when you go for more Sugar Corn Pops. Yippee! Sugar Pops. They're sugar-coated, tastes so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now, sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. <laughs> When Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles rode into the town of Black Rock, they rode into gunfire, rustling, and murder. And with information given them by their old friend Charlie Nichols, they've started out to trail two desperate men who will shoot to kill. Bill, you're heading out of town. You ain't going to the livery stable at all. I know it, Jingles. Out here is where the coyote on that black horse took a shot at us. I want to know why. You think maybe he's got something out here he didn't want us to see? That's exactly what I think. And since he didn't know who we were, there must be something he doesn't want any strangers to see. What's that, Bill? Cattle, I hope. Head for that little rise over there. Yeah, I just happened to think of something, Bill. What's that, partner? You know, we could get shot at again just like the last time we was out here. I hope we do. Bill, are you loco? I don't like being a target for bushwhackers. If somebody takes a shot at us, that'll prove that we're crowding them too close for comfort. Yeah, but isn't there any safer way to prove it? Here we are. Pull up. Pull up. Oh, 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 Joker, easy. Well, what do you know? A nice big herd of fat steers moving out. And look at those two riders down there. One's on a big pinto, and the other's riding a black. Yeah, Rango and Blandon. Neither one of them's wearing a red shirt. They can change shirts, but they'll never change their ways. Come on, Jingles, and watch out. They're dangerous. Hot buckshot. Ha! Ho, Joker, you heard what Bill said, and I don't like it. 
They'd seen us, Jingles. Yeah, one of them's pointing a rifle, Bill. Spread out a little so they can't get us both. I don't want them to get either one of them. Rest them off, Jingles. You knocked one off his horse. That's Wrangle. Blennon's getting away. He's heading for those rocks up there. Let him go, Jingles. Oh, what's a who on? Oh, slow down, Joker. With those cliffs behind him, he won't get away. Let's take a look at the one we dropped. Doesn't seem to be hurt too bad. Howdy, Wrangle. I didn't think I'd beat you again so soon. Oh, yeah. You're awful good with a six-gun, Hickok. Yeah, you bet he is. That arm will heal up in time for you to stand trial for rustling. And maybe murder, too. You got us with stolen cattle, but I didn't have nothing to do with killing the sheriff. Blandon did that, huh? That's right, and he was going to kill you, too. Now look at him. As soon as I get hit, he runs and hides in the rocks. I don't blame him. I met a lot of no-good rats who wish they could run away and hide from Wild Bill. Well, you're going to have trouble smoking him out. He's a dead shot. Tie this one up, Jingles. I'm going to go see what I can do about our hold-up friend. Down, Jingles. I'm already down. The best thing you can do about him is stay down out of range. Well, if we can't go after him, he can't get out. So make yourself comfortable behind a rock, Jingles. We might be here a long time. Bill, are we going to sit out here all night? Just till that full moon goes down, Jingles. As soon as it's good and dark, we'll sneak up on him from two sides. He'll get one of you for sure. He killed the sheriff before the old boy had a chance to draw. Well, he ain't tried to outdraw, Bill. It can't be done. Quiet. Thought I heard something. <laughs> Nothing but crickets. I heard something up there on top of that cliff, above those rocks. You suppose Blanton's climbing out? Come on. Stay down low so he won't have a good shot. Stop right there, Hickok. Wait a minute, Dingles. He's still there. Yeah. You make a pretty target there in the moonlight, both of you. All right, throw down your guns or I'll plug your fat friend. Okay, Blannon. You've got us covered. You too, big boy. We sure walked into this one, Bill. All right, now I'm coming down. Leave it. We'll track you down sooner or later. You won't be alive to do it. I'm plugging you both right now. Get your guns. Charlie, what are you doing out here? Well, I'm sliding down a cliff. Yeah. And it ain't easy either when you're 83. Yeah. Oh, was that you making all that racket? <laughs> well, sure. And I saved you both from getting plugged, too, didn't I? <laughs> nice shooting, Bill. He isn't dead, Charlie, but he won't wake up for a long time. You like the scared me to death, Charlie. Uh, what was all that noise? Well, yeah. Same kind of a joke I rigged up for you with the Cracker Barrel jingles, only bigger. <laughs> I dropped it off the cliff right on top of that varmint. Well, you sure gave me a chance to get my gun and drop him. But what were you doing up here, Charlie? Oh, Bill, I've been following you all day. Things get dull at the store. I thought I might get a chance to sneak up and play another joke on Jingles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure did, Charlie. But any time you want to play jokes that keep me from getting killed, <laughs> that's the kind of jokes I think are real funny. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Thanks for being with us, folks. We'll be back on Friday with another Wild Bill Hickok story for you. Yes, sir, and it's one you won't want to miss. Wild Bill and Jingles tangle with a crazy old coot in a story called The Wild Miller of Paiute Fall. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think sugar corn pops are great. So long. See you Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir, Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. 
Today's cast included Forrest Lewis, Paul Fries, Paul Richards, and Jack Moyles. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Friday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok runs into the Wild Miller of Paiute Falls. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.